welcomes you to the Union Lumber Company store for the Mendocino Media Makers. Hosted by Lindy Peters. Good evening and welcome to Mendocino Media Makers. I'm Lindy Peters, the new host for our webcast here, live streaming from uh, MendocinoTV.com. The studio is here in the old company store. First off, we want to say that Doug Waldo uh, did a great job hosting this show. He's unable to uh, continue to host the show. Doug is, uh, well, he's in jail. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, he was arrested for having too much fun. Actually, he has too many responsibilities. Doug has a, a new job. In fact, you'll see him driving around as an MTA driver in Fort Bragg. So say hello to Doug Waldo, the former host. He did a great job, and uh, I have some big shoes to fill. Of course, I have size 13 feet, so. <clears throat> anyway, this is television that keeps on giving. We have a live studio audience. We're live streaming on the internet, and thanks for joining us here. This is the future of television, the internet, so you folks are ahead of the curve right now. This is uh, International Interactive Internet Experience. Gives you a chance with the uh, your telephone or your internet chat box to participate in the show. We have a question and answer uh, we'll have a little later on. You can call 964-0101 or uh, you can chat in that little window alongside uh, your uh, internet screen there. So thanks for joining us. We're, we have an exciting show. We want to mention a couple of things that are upcoming here. Uh, first off, uh, Hit and Run Theater and Friends will have a comedy improv weekend. That'll be Saturday, March 30th, 730 at the uh, Hill House in Mendocino. Also, the Mendocino Theatre Company has an ongoing production, Boy Gets Girl. We'll talk more about that on the show here tonight with the uh, producer of the uh, Theatre Company, who's uh, one of our guests, and uh, also the International Wildlife Film Festival. For anybody uh, viewing us in Ukiah, that'll be Friday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. at the Ukiah Civic Center, and it should be a fun uh, film festival. So a lot of things going on. The Mendocino Media Maker TV show here on the Internet likes to try and give you an idea of uh, what's happening and some of the artists and newsmakers and media makers here. So our guests tonight include the uh, Mendocino Theater Company's producing director, who uh, really has done an outstanding job with the uh, theater company in the short time she's been here. And uh, we're going to talk to her about the theater company. We'll find out about her personally. And uh, first, we're going to take a look at some of the work she's done on stage before we bring her here for the interview. So let's take a look at our first guest, Felicia Freitas, on stage at the Mendocino Theater Company and some other stage experiences we'll talk about as well. Baby, kiss me goodbye. I feel like a freak to say this, but I love you. Goodbye. with a staff of 30 and a budget of 8 million plus, responsible for making hundreds of decisions every day, can revert to a spineless infant every time she speaks to her mother. <laughs> sure is a big fox. What have you been up to, Amy Lee? Been busy as a bee. I'm on the entertainment committee for the country club and the recreation committee for First Baptist. <laughs> that sounds tough. It is, because there's very few fun things about <laughs> and the country club committee, too. I am the entertainment committee. No one to help you. Claire Sims. I see what you mean. One can't expect many clever ideas from a woman who's had two strokes in one year. No. Um, <laughs> no. I love the way you're wearing your hair, Hattie. Yes? Yes. Yeah, it's just cute as a bug. Cute as a bug. I mean, bug. 
We're back in the studios, and we're with that uh, person who was the entertainment committee, the one-person entertainment <laughs> committee, Felicia Freitas, who uh, is the producing director for the Mendocino Theater Company. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, you do a lot of different things on stage. You're uh, an actress. You've uh, been a stage manager, mm -hmm. designer, mm -hmm. director, mm -hmm. and now you're the producing director. I am. For the Mendocino yeah. Theater Company. Yeah. How did you get involved with the Mendocino Theater Company? I'm sure it started probably maybe as a whim or it might be fun to do, and then all of a sudden, um, look, look where you are today. Yeah. Um, well, I was, uh, I'd kind of always done theater, um, you know, way back to when I was probably two years old. <laughs> um, and I uh, uh, was actually Doug Warner's intern when I was 14 years old. I was going to Mendocino High School. And he's one of uh, my I'm predecessors. Sorry, sorry about that. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> D Doug's an old friend. Yeah. And he was very much involved in theater here at one yeah. time. No, right. he, he's one of my predecessors. And so mm -hmm. I worked with him in the office there. Um, and now I have Ivy Sears, daughter of uh, Beth Richmond and Carter Sears, as my intern. So it's, it's very cyclical. Um, but I worked, uh, I did a lot of designing, stage management, um, even a little bit of directing and acting before I left. When I graduated, I went to Ashland, Oregon, Southern Oregon. Now, where'd you graduate from? Uh, just from high school, honestly. I did a little bit Mendocino of college. Mendocino High School? Uh, yeah. Fort Bragg High School? Mendocino, Mendocino High School. And right. uh, did a little bit of college while I was up there. Um, mm -hmm. Came back intending to stay for about six months and five years later. You're still here? <laughs> I'm still here. It happens. Um, it does. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, when I as soon as I got back, I uh, joined the board of directors, and it sort of taken off from there. Mm -hmm. But I've only been in this role since this last August. And you're recently married. I'm recently married. Yeah, this well, last December. Well, tell us about that now. You went, <laughs> uh, now most people, when you get married, you know, you're thinking Carmel by the Sea, <laughs> Yosemite Valley. Where'd you go? Disneyland. <laughs> More specifically, a Cajun restaurant in between Disneyland and Disneyland's California Adventure. So uh, it was fun. You know, I'm not a wedding person. I bartended right. too many weddings to be a fan of weddings. Right. And so I wanted uh, I wanted just to have fun. There were five people there and us. And right. That was it. Well, it's appropriate. I mean, marriage, yeah. marriage is quite a ride. It is. That's for sure. <laughs> it is. Well, let's talk about Ashland a little bit because that's such okay. a theater mecca. Yeah. And, you know, Mendocino has a lot of uh, a theater here for a mm -hmm. small community yeah. in Fort Bragg, the coastal area. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ashland, that is world renowned. And to get up there and have an opportunity, Doug Warner, by the way, went up there mm -hmm. and he started a dinner theater. Mm -hmm. And we're is that what took you up there initially? Or? No, you know, it's funny. I was planning on going up there, and then Doug and Arlene, his wife, made the announcement that they were going up. They moved up about uh, six months before I did, mm -hmm. and uh, he was the associate producing director at the Camelot Theater up there, and I worked at Oregon Stageworks with a, a wonderful little theater in the round run by a man named Peter Alzado, who actually may direct uh, next year for MTC. We're still talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, after I left, Doug and Peter connected, and they've actually started a theater in the Criterion Ginger Rogers, which is this big, beautiful theater. Ginger Rogers was from the area, and mm -hmm. so now they're working together. Um, but yeah, it was a wonderful place to be. Really, really. Well, wonderful. you could really, you know, think about theater like a lot of different arts as the yeah. experience is the yeah. the key to sort of move along. Very few people are gifted, even as actors or actresses. Mm -hmm until they sort of get the craft, you know, mm -hmm. where to stand on stage, stage direction, that sort yeah. of thing, how to develop a character. Mm -hmm. what, what are the things you need to do as the uh, producing director uh, of the theater company? Do you get to choose which plays? Uh, Not are, exactly. Uh, is there a committee? There is a committee. How does it work? So, so I have a, a permanent seat on a five-member committee, mm -hmm. and we choose each season, and then everybody else sort of rotates in and out. Um, do you choose it by who wants to direct a particular that show? That more or? and more, because director's passion really drives mm -hmm. whether something's going to be, you know, uh, a successful production is really just going to have that extra something. Um, what do the actors want to act in? What can we cast? What can we stage on this stage? Um, and, you know, we're f almost a 50-year-old theater company. You know, uh, we've been doing plays in the Art Center site since 1965. Uh, Mendocino Theater Company was previously MPAC, and that was incorporated in 1976, but it goes all the way back to 65. So 
finding plays that we haven't already done and right. finding a uh, good balance is tricky. Um, people right. love comedy. It's hard to find really good comedies. Right. Um, you know, finding stuff that has something something to say, raises interesting questions that a wide variety of people will respond to. And the trick too, you know, if we were in San Francisco or New York, there could be six or seven theater companies all doing classics and six or seven more all doing dark comedies and more edgy contemporary theater. We are really it. And so with the six plays that we have, we try to uh, create a little bit of something for everyone. Now, um, people haven't been to the Helen Cheney Theater where the performing arts for the Mendocino Theater Company take place. It, it's a challenge. It's, a, it's yeah. very small, which makes it nice for the audience. It's intimate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you don't, as an actor, actors have to use your diaphragm and really, you know, speak out to the last row like at Cotton Auditorium. Right. Uh, but the challenge is the backstage is limited. Yeah. Um, the dressing areas are limited. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a very small, challenging place. So m that might have something to do with how you select a play too. I would think you can't Absolutely. have a big, giant production here. Yeah, that's for sure. yeah. I mean, you know, it it amazes me the kind of stuff that we have actually pulled off. Um, one of our plays coming up this year requires a working door, two rooms, an outdoor area, snow. Mm -hmm. The play that I'm directing right now, um, Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, requires floor-to-ceiling animal topiaries. And our designers are wonderful. They're so creative. Mm -hmm. They're able to do it. But yeah, it's about 20 by 20, the stage, and 82 seats. So, you know, we can't fit everything on there. Um, right. But we try. <laughs> now, how long is a typical run? You, you choose a play. A uh, director casts the play. Mm -hmm. You start rehearsing. But the actual run itself, mm -hmm. how, is there an established season and yep. each play gets it's, a it's changed over the years but this uh, this season it's five weeks each show 18 performances so we have uh, Thursday through Saturday nights for five weeks and then the last three weeks we have Sunday matinees at two and that's standard for all of the shows so right yeah. and the pool of actors and actresses yeah. oftentimes you know you'll need a whole lot of let's say 20 to 25 year old men mm -hmm. and <laughs> sometimes that's difficult to cast yeah. here yeah. Uh, as it might be anywhere for that yeah. matter but so then you got people who have to really act yeah yeah <laughs> and it's a challenge I would imagine you'd think of those type of restrictions when you're casting or I mean when you're selecting a play like yeah. you know well can, can we cast this oh that yeah sort of thing oh it's a huge consideration um you know, do characters have to be of a certain ethnicity? The young man, man problem is a problem <laughs> that we have. <laughs> and what's unfortunate is a lot of the plays that are being written and that have been written have young, young leads. Um, you know, in their 20s, they're supposed to be in their 20s or 30s, and especially men. And, and that's a challenge for us, but we're doing it. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. Well, the entertainment dollar is limited here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the economy isn't that great, uh, but people do like to support the arts. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a, a, we were talking off the air, mm -hmm. a, new, a, a new graphic artist. I do. Who has uh, come up with a very nice... Uh, uh, a new slick brochure. This is your new logo. Is it that is. correct right it here? Is. I don't know if we can get a shot of that or not. That's <laughs> the new logo for the Mendocino Theater Company. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, a very impressive brochure. And if you are trying to attract the yeah. audience, so where did you find your graphic artist uh, uh, and who is she? And Her name is uh, Lisa Garza Hillman um, with Inkfish mm -hmm. Design. And mm -hmm. she's just an incredible designer. They also do letterpress. Um, but she, you know, her husband was an actor, or is an actor, who worked down in Hollywood. He was in um, movies like Men in Black and Ghost World, and they have two young twins. <laughs> two twins. Um, they have a pair <laughs> of twins. Um, and so he hasn't really been able to be involved in the theater, but um, my husband and I know them, and I know her work is incredible, and so she'd like to be involved, you know, in some mm -hmm. way, and they, they enjoy sort of supporting theater while, you know, he's, right. he's not available, and her work is incredible, so I'm, I'm really thrilled. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to do? My favorite thing to do as uh, as part of a stage production. Oh, as part of a stage production. Acting, I would think. Depends on the play. Mm -hmm. Acting or directing. It it really depends on the play. Most plays, as a director, I wouldn't touch with a ten foot pole. But mm -hmm. I think very specific things I'm good at. And when I find a play that I feel like I can, right, I can do something with. It's pretty thrilling if it all works out. Um, 
Well, but boy acting, meets, yeah. Boy Meets Girls playing now. Yes. And you are directing an upcoming show. The next show, yeah. And let's talk about that so people have something to look forward to. You just yeah. mentioned directing, uh, so why did you pick this show oh, and what's well, special about it? It's called Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo. Uh, Robin Williams just closed it on Broadway. All of our plays this year are 21st century American plays. Um, mm -hmm. Half of them were finalists of the Pulitzer Prize or won. Um, so they're all very, very new plays. And this one closed in July of 2011 uh, with Robin Williams playing the tiger. And it's, um, it's a very surreal, I'm calling it a comedy, but it, uh, it's big in its scope. It's very spiritual and it's loosely, loosely based on an article in 2003 about two soldiers in the Baghdad Zoo that were guarding a tiger and it, the tiger bit one man's hand and the other soldier shot him. Um, and that's the first five minutes of the play. Right. Um, more than half of the characters in my play are ghosts that walk and talk. Um, it's got a lot of spirituality in it. Um, it's got a lot of symbolism in it, but it's wildly funny. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have Uday Hussein, the ghost of Uday Hussein is a character. I have a walking, talking tiger. Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to be a wild ride. It's a big Sounds play. like a challenge. It is a challenge, but yeah. um, it's a beautiful play. And when does that run? May 2nd to the 26th. Okay. Yeah. We're talking to Felicia Freitas, the uh, producing director for the Mendocino Theatre Company, but you also get out there on the boards and do a little acting, too. I do. So mm -hmm. what, what's probably your favorite part that you've played? Uh, we, we saw a few of uh, yeah. your, you know, some of the scenes and some of the work you've done. Is there one that stands out that you really enjoyed? or? hard to pick a favorite. Um, well, you know, a little bit of Jesse May was in that clip from uh, Trip to Bountiful, and that was a real treat. Um, mm -hmm. I got to do a few years back Yelena and Uncle Vanya. That it's mm. a treat to do Chekhov. Right. Um, and then also, when I was up in Ashland, I got to do Mayella Yule in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, and that was oh, a right. really terrific yeah. experience. Um, so those three, I don't know if I can get any more right. specific than that. Right. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been lucky. Right. So what's the future of the theater company? Are things looking good? Is it uh, things are solvent, looking, as they like to say? Things are looking terrific, yeah. From um, a business standpoint, it's... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're trying to, um, you know, with any 50-year-old theater company, keeping the excitement up is always a challenge. Um, but the plays that we have this season are so, so incredible. I mean, the, the suspense of Boy Gets Girl and the, the surreal quality of Bengal Tiger, Doubt with... Um, um, was just made into a movie with Philip Seymour Hoffman and Meryl Streep. We have that coming this summer. We have a Hitchcock classic done with clowns. Um, so I think this season is really going to generate a lot of excitement. And that's my mm -hmm. real goal is uh, getting actors excited to work and getting people excited to come see the shows. Right. Um, but no, things are going very, very well. We just remodeled our lobby. Mm -hmm. um, now tell us about, let me ask you something here yeah. now. There's a story that goes around that at one time on stage at the Helen Cheney Theater, an actor in performance died on stage. It's true. That, I'm not trying to make light of it, but it, it's a true story? It is. It's a true story. It was um, before uh, uh, we became MPAC, so it would have been pre-1976. I'm not sure of the exact year, but they were doing mm -hmm. Moliere's Tartuffe. And I, I honestly don't know the gentleman's name, um, but Marilee Pence was in that show, Peter Wells was in that show, and they've both told me a little bit about it. Apparently the gentleman, and he had said, you know, I love doing this, I hope I, hope I get to do this for the rest of my life, <laughs> something to that effect a few weeks before, but he was um, aggressively gesticulating and yelling in some scene in Tartuffe and had a heart heart attack or something mm -hmm. to that effect and died on stage. Wow. Yeah. Now, you said you redesigned the lobby. Do you, did you find a picture of this guy? Do we I know did. who he is? I did. I, I don't know his name, but right. uh, one of the actors that worked with him in that production brought in a photo, so we're going to blow it up and put it in the lobby. Um, he gave his life yeah. for the theater. He did. He sure did. Well, listen, we've been having a great chat. We're going to continue here in a moment. We do need to take a time out. We have a second guest with us here tonight that we're going to bring on board that I think you're going to enjoy as well. He, too, is in the, uh, the world of theater, only he's a musician, not an actor, not a director. Max, a piano player, will be joining us. This should be fun. He's going to play the piano, too, so stick around. We'll take a short time out and return here with Mendocino Media Makers in just a flash. Bamboo Garden Spa is Fort Bragg's premier five-star spa. 
offering a wide variety of indulgent and relaxing treatments. We have five luxurious treatment rooms, two private tranquility suites with soap tubs and saunas. Our certified massage therapists are proficient in both functional body work and deep tissue massage. We make many of our bath additives and body treatments in-house using only the finest natural ingredients. Call 962-9396 to make an appointment today. Vicky Ray Salon, a European-style salon with 30 years' experience, offering the finest hair color, cutting, and products. Enhance and transform. We find your style for everyday and special occasions. Color consultations, weddings, makeup, waxing. Appointments encouraged. 11 a.m. to perfection. Located in Fort Bragg's company store. Call 707-964-7385. The Mendocino Cookie Company and Zappa's Internet Cafe. Internet access, gourmet cookies, muffins, scones, pastry, espresso drinks, and more. 301 North Main Street, Fort Bragg. Open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Send an elegant tin to your loved ones, friends, or clients at www.mendocinocookies.com or call toll-free 1-888-937-4842. Let us help you make someone's day. Hi, I'm Charlie Lorenz. Come join me on a scuba diving tour, a kayak diving adventure, or an abalone hunt here along the beautiful Mendocino coast of Northern California. Call Charlie at North Coast Discovery, 707-937-2091. That's 937-2091. So before he signed off, he went to go play with Buddy Greco. We still don't know if this was a move up, down, or sideways in show business. I wrote this for him. And this song, ladies and gentlemen, has been played on the nationally syndicated Dr. Demento show. Yes, Max the Piano Player has been on the air. We still don't know if this is a move up, down, or sideways in the show business. Start spilling the booze. The devil's to pay. Someone is gonna ask me to play New York, New York. It's played on a cruise. 19 times a day It's become quite a test to play New York, New York Why glorify a dirty city without a heart? Well, to be perfectly frank Sinatra has rank And singing his song may success at the bank Ladies and gentlemen, that was Max, the piano player I don't know how many years ago uh, that uh, little clip was from, but uh, he's with us at our studios. He's the same old Max, the piano player, and uh, I, I've known Max for a long time. And uh, all the way from New York City to the Mendocino Coast. Yes. And you played the piano all the way, all I the came way here. I on a buckboard wagon. That's right. Entertaining. <laughs> I gotta ask you for land rush. Now, Max, is that short for Maximilian? Maximus no, or Maxwell? Max. Yeah, just you just Max. Call me Maxwell if you want. But okay, <laughs> Maxwell, smart. Uh, Makes no difference. Max, the piano player. Yeah. New York City. No. No, I want to. I want to go back to longer. I'm going to go back to New York City. Do that. That's where you grew up. Well, where in New York City? Lower East Side, and I got a job in San Francisco playing for the San fabulous San Francisco Cockettes. Uh huh. And the theater we got in New York on tour after Rex Reed and Truman Capote made us go big time was six blocks from where I grew up. How about that? God has a weird sense of humor. Yeah. I still love them. Now, it's not easy being a musician <clears throat> and making a living. You gotta that, smile yeah. all the time, no matter what you feel like. Uh huh. <laughs> And you are a humorous, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're someone who sings song parodies, like Tom Lair, of course, mm -hmm. is one of the great ones. Yes. Um, and you just heard my parody of You Nork, You Nork. Right, <laughs> which was fabulous, fantastic. And you've got a lot of those, I'm sure. Not anymore, I'm teaching now. Yeah. I'm leaving this to younger, braver souls. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. As a musician, you must have had some other odd jobs along the way. Yes. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we could well, remember I've, a few of those. <laughs> I've, uh, any place that had a piano here on the Mendo Coast, I mm -hmm. worked Mendocino Hotel, Heritage House, Hill House, mm -hmm. 
I have uh, pet names for them too, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's okay. Hysteria House, <laughs> Mendo Dada Hotel, mm -hmm. Hell House. Spell I'm not going to be able to show my face. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It is. And here's an old, uh, here's a name from the past that uh, maybe some folks will uh, remember. The Pine Beach Inn. Yes. One of the first piano bars. Well, it seemed like a piano bar at the time. And when you walked in, there was the piano and there was the bar. It was a piano bar. It really was wonderful. It felt like yeah. the real thing. Now, how long did you play there? I had several summers mm -hmm. that I held down by myself. And right. then we alternated with a couple of other piano players. Okay. It was really wonderful. I got to be able to walk to work. Right. Now, are you ma mainly solo then? Do you, have, do you ever play with a band or is it Max Working with other musicians has compelled me to become a solo act. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah. Uh, it's part of Max the Piano Player's third rule of show business. The right. difficulty in achieving great art increases geometrically with the number of people involved. One times one is one. I don't have to keep straight with myself. <laughs> I, there's nobody I can say take it to, but there's nobody right. I can blame either. Do you play other instruments besides the piano? I sing. You play your vocal cord? That's an instrument. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I did not sing for a long time, and then mm -hmm. I realized that I just was not going to make it as a pianist, and I had to right. sing and then entertain. Right. That was a major step. Yeah. Well, how did you end up in... Mendocino County, specifically in Philo. So we, New York City, you didn't, we didn't want to talk about that. It seemed too much. Out to San Francisco, back to New York for a bit, back to San Francisco, and then up to Philo. I mean, yeah, how, it's as far away as I could get from Manhattan without getting how wet. You, how did you discover Philo, though? It was just a miracle of timing. Uh, the golden. Did, did you have a friend up there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I lived in a, a wonderful house that, between Philo and Navarro. Mm -hmm. Everything is available in Manhattan 24-7. Uh, there's nothing available between Philo and Navarro 24-7. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> if I wanted phone anything, won't work. That's right. If I wanted anything, all I could do was really abstain. All right. All right. Do you find solitude uh, something that is good for, a, oh, for yes, you as yes. a musician? Oh, yes, I didn't care for Manhattan very much. Right. Some people like, the, you know, musicians like the excitement. They like the... I How went about for acting? You know, Solitude? Do you like to like get alone when you're uh, trying to you know learn your lines or develop your character, or do you like to no. stare at other people and say, "Oh, I bet she'd walk like that"? Or oh, I mean, certainly some people I've used, I've grabbed from other people for mm -hmm. characters, certainly. But but no, I mean, I think certainly for for line learning and for developing a character, watching is the best way to do it, and being in the world and gaining new experiences. Um, I think there's creativity and adrenaline often go hand in hand for me. So right. um, solitude's never been my my thing. Right. Now, Max, when you did you write parody songs? Obviously, it, you're you're using another musician's song, and then you change the words around. But did you ever write, uh, you know, a song, a serious song? Oh, I wrote a whole show um, called uh, A Christmas Story, or mm -hmm. also known as Dear Santa. Right. And uh, it was an assignment. I'm an assignment writer. Some writers start from scratch. They feel compelled to write. Mm -hmm. I wait for an assignment. And I was given this wonderful book. And I said, here, write, write a show. And we came up with some wonderful material. And I remember the creative process quite well. I wrote well above my ability. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the places you've played here. You didn't I hold the land speed record for the Mendocino Hotel, two and a <laughs> half years of weekends. Wow. Yeah. And, and at one point I was with uh, a bassist on uh, Friday night, Thursday night alone, Saturday night with a drummer. Mm -hmm. And I had to change my style every night to yeah. accommodate them. It was really a challenge. And one time during the winter, we were three of us were really cooking along in the middle of the song. The power went out as it does <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. And luckily we were not electric. We <laughs> just kept right on going. We're acoustic. <laughs> Adjusted our dynamic right at the moment and kept going. Brought out candles. It got real romantic. About an hour later, the power came back on and the audience went, oh. <laughs> See, that's yeah. terrible. <laughs> that could ruin the mood. I huh? thought it was something you should do every week. Well, there used to be so many venues for a musician around Yes, here. yes. And, and now one there's... One by one, they're disappearing. The Casper Inn, the latest, I guess. Yeah. Although, at yeah. limited bases, I guess that'll be open. But uh, what do you think the reason for that is? I think people are coming up to spend their money at the hotels and stay in. And we've got DVDs and the internet. And why go anywhere after getting here? 
Mm -hmm. Getting here is a daunting journey. Right. So going out and after that is uh, really you well, have to be. What about the locals? What about what about the rest of us? <laughs> what about those that, of us who are that's stuck why, here in January? That's why I'm teaching. On a rainy weekend, <laughs> I have we no might idea. like to go hear a piano player. Or mm -hmm. It well, just seems Felicia like Felicia and I are talking about yeah. doing something together in uh, mm -hmm. in one of the theatrical venues. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah. All it takes is a liquor bar. Yep. That's, that's right. where the profit margin is. <laughs> right. Right. Now you've probably played for a few inebriated people over the years. I've Do you been have any very stories? Uh, come on, you've the, got the, wor the worst. Billy Joel really, wrote a song no. about it for yeah, crying he, out loud. He was in L.A. He, th th <laughs> there's right. no excuse for that. No. <laughs> the worst was uh, somebody made a request and put the dollar in the jar and came back later and said, I didn't hear it, and he took his dollar back out. That, <laughs> that was the worst. Other than that, I've been very fortunate, very fortunate. Oh. People have been very nice to me. Well, that's good. And other jobs now. I'm going to ask you something here, Max, because this is a... Uh, what have you got on there? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this is interesting because I don't know how many years ago this was, but many, many years ago, I have a first cousin from Minneapolis, and uh, she called an 800 number, not, not one of those kind of 800 <laughs> numbers, but she called, not a 900 number, she <laughs> called an 800 number, I can't remember if it was like a psychic hotline or what it was, but Max answered the phone and he talked to her for a long time. Oh, I've scared people, yes. And yes, uh, uh, talked to her nicely enough that somehow she figured out where he was and asked if she, if, if you had ever heard of Lindy Peters and then one time we were talking about, it. I mean that's, yeah. so I, was I gotta know, what, what was that all about? That was pretty funny. the astrology hotlines, the astrology hotlines. Astrology was, hotlines, Yeah, okay. when, uh, back in the days when it was 4.75 a minute and I got a quarter out right. of it. People, I'd have a shift, and my phone would be connected to uh, the main line. So you're an astrologist, then? Yes, astrologer. Astrologer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and this was an astrology hotline? Yeah, and I'd have my computer set up, and people would call in. I'd quick get the chart up and start talking. Really? Yeah. Wow. So they'd say, I'm a Pisces, no, and I no, was no, born no, on they, such and such a date? They would just give me what they had, and I would tell them. Oh. And I would have to talk real fast at that rate of pay. Right. And uh, my favorite responses were uh, one board executive said, how do you people know this stuff? And one couple called in, they were laughing, and obviously post-coital, and they stopped laughing. He said, mister, you're scaring us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess I don't really want an astrology. <laughs> I don't think you, you do. <laughs> um, we would I, like I no longer ask people. Yeah. If they want to know, they'll ask me. Okay. We're going to get you to play the piano here in a little bit. You ready That's for that? pretty scary, too. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, Felicia had an idea here. You sing? No, no. Oh, no, no. no. Okay. But no, but do I you often sing Lindy? do. Uh, yes. Lindy does sing. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, I don't know if I'll do it tonight, but <laughs> we were talking about Tom Lehrer, one of your inspirations, yes. and uh, you mentioned a song. Poisoning Yes, yes. No, don't give it away. Don't oh. give it away. Poisoning No. <laughs> Well, there goes the punch there are folks <laughs> that don't know that song or are unaware of that song. All right. <laughs> they must hear it now. Tom Lehrer, the master of song parodies yes. and one of the funniest guys when it came to, you know, seeing someone perform live. He was just, he had the timing down. He was, he was, he was a physicist. Right. He could sing the periodic table of the elements now you to Gilbert and Sullivan. Before we break for some commercials here and before we get you to play, you had a chance to talk to him briefly on the phone. How did, yes. that, how did that happen? Uh, I was going to produce a show called Tom Foolery, a review of his work at Crown Hall. And the uh, quote I got from the theatrical agency was absurd, so I thought I'd do an end run and see if I could talk to him. I didn't expect to hear from him. My yeah. son answered the phone, and he knew who it was. He was a little bit shocked as he handed it to me. And I re he said, just go ahead and do it. Don't pay anything. Just call it something else. He was a really revolutionary guy. How about that? It was so wonderful. he said, go ahead and pirate my work. I don't <laughs> care. I really had to resist the urge to say, you know, you sound an awful lot like you do on the records. <laughs> How about that? Well, listen, we're going to hear Max play the piano. We're going to hear one of those great Tom Lehrer tunes when we come back. We're going to have a couple of commercials here as Mendocino Media Makers continues here in just a moment. Vicky Ray Salon, a European style salon with 30 years experience, offering the finest hair color, cutting and products. Enhance and transform. We find your style for everyday and special occasions. 
color consultations, weddings, makeup, waxing, appointments encouraged, 11 a.m. to perfection, located in Fort Bragg's company store. Call 707-964-7385. Hi, I'm Charlie Lorenz. Come join me on a scuba diving tour, a kayak diving adventure, or an abalone hunt here along the beautiful Mendocino coast of Northern California. Call Charlie at North Coast Discovery, 707-937-2091. That's 937-2091. Bamboo Garden Spa is Fort Bragg's premier five-star spa offering a wide variety of indulgent and relaxing treatments. We have five luxurious treatment rooms, two private tranquility suites with soap tubs and saunas. Our certified massage therapists are proficient in both functional body work and deep tissue massage. We make many of our bath additives and body treatments in-house using only the finest natural ingredients. Call 962-9396 to make an appointment today. The Mendocino Cookie Company and Zappa's Internet Cafe. Internet access, gourmet cookies, muffins, scones, pastry, espresso drinks, and more. 301 North Main Street, Fort Bragg. Open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Send an elegant tin to your loved ones, friends, or clients at www.mendocinocookies.com or call toll-free 1-888-937-4842. Let us help you make someone's day. And good evening. We're back here with Mendocino Media Makers. I'm Lindy Peters, your host. And uh, with us, we have Felicia Freitas from the Mendocino Theater Company. And sitting at the piano, ready to tickle the old ivories, is Max a piano player. Max has played at just about every music venue that's ever been here, probably even Toad Hall. I didn't ask him that, but I bet he probably did at one time. But he also played on cruise ships. He played in big cities like New York City and San Francisco and in Philo. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to play for us in our studios here. So we're excited. And uh, we want to introduce the first song as a Tom Lehrer specialty. What's the name of it again, Felicia? Poisoning Pigeons in the Park. Max, a piano player <laughs> here on Mendocino Media Makers. All the world seems in tune on a spring afternoon while we're poisoning pigeons in the park. Every Sunday you'll see my sweetheart and me as we poison the pigeons in the park. When they see us coming, the birdies all try and hide But they still go for peanuts when coated with cyanide The sun's shining bright, everything seems all right While we're poisoning pigeons in the park There you have it. Very nice. That's the short form. <laughs> yeah. All right, now while we got you there, we're, we're like at the, uh, the old piano bar here. Yeah. I don't want we're you to think I'm not a serious musician. <laughs> no, I know you are. Okay. And that's just it. You are a serious musician, and uh, you know the world needs more serious musicians. Uh, how about something? If you were, let's say, uh, you were at the piano bar, and somebody popped in there, and they said, "Hey, man, can you play Billy Joel?" What would you say? I would say yes. He's been a huge inspiration to me. Sure, I mean, just. Uh he doesn't sing this anymore. Don't go changing. To try and please me, you never let me down before. Don't imagine, and like that. Right, you know, very nice. See now, human jukebox here. We did huh? not discuss any of these songs <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I just walked off the play. street. Yeah. Uh, is there a particular style of music? Do you like show tunes? Do you like jazz? Uh, if you know, if you yes. just were to can sit you down count, right can now, can you count to five? Take a little time out with me. Just take five, just take five. Stop your busy day and take the time out to see that I'm alive. One, two, three, four, five. Well, it's like two people waltzing, only one missing a leg. Right. <laughs> well. Another bride, another June, another sunny honeymoon, another season. Another reason 
for making Whoopi. I imagine I'm Michelle Pfeiffer on a grand piano oh, yes. in the Fabulous Baker Boys. Did you see that audition yeah. scene? Oh, I was on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I fell off my couch. We have a wonderful couple in our studio audience. If, uh, if you Are they ready little, to sing? If, if you could play a little love song for them. A little love song. Uh, yeah. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh The fundamental things apply As time goes by Very nice. We should have a little conversation of You played it for her, play it for me, oh, come on! <laughs> most terribly misquoted. Yeah, yeah. It's, but you, it's, you it's a great line. Mm -hmm. Sam. He never did. All right, well, uh, how about, uh, did you have, you know, the 60s come along, and boy, what a, just a explosion of music in the 60s. Yes. The Beatles, uh, were they? What would you think if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Ringo really did get by with a little help from his friends. <laughs> Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try to sing out of key. Billy Joel gives a lot of credit to the Beatles. Right. They turned him on. He wrote to their uh, record company and said, how do we get a recording contract? And they sent him a fan kit. <laughs> <laughs> really well, crestfall. When you were in New York, uh, did you have the opportunity to see a lot of Did you go to Greenwich Village? To I see went to Greenwich Village. Shows? I went to Broadway. I, when I went back to visit, uh, people said to me, how could you leave here? This is where it's all happening. I said, when did you get here? I, know I was 22. What, what do you like? Museums did it. Shows did it. Yeah. Right. I burned out on the place. Right. Okay. I liked Philo a lot. <laughs> There's nobody there. Okay, Broadway show tunes. Yes. Do you have a favorite show? Did oh. You, did you see any of the big ones? Did you see like West Side Story or any of those uh, the legendary shows back I there? I saw the Fantastics. Oh. Very good. Uh, before they had to threaten that they were going to stop showing it. Uh, I saw, yeah, I saw a lot of good shows. Uh, the Man of La Mancha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole show is written in 9-8 time. Every song you have to count to 9 against 8. And what that means is, you know, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, and 2, and 3. The Spanish folk rhythm. Mm -hmm. Right. Really hard. Man of La Mancha. Yeah. Is it, do you have a favorite? And I learned to sing so that I could sing a song called Dulcinea. But I had, some, I had my teacher playing it for me at the time. I'll give it a shot. Um, I have dreamed thee too long, never seen thee or touched thee, but known thee with all of my heart. That's the feeling of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and two. And somewhere, she told me I was going to be too puny to sing, mm -hmm. short, skinny. And I said, let's try it, we may get written up in the medical journals. Somewhere in the sixth lesson, she turned around and said, you have another gift, you can sing. Now go get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Which was really great. It gave me, she gave me the green light. It was really nice. Right. Could you play like ragtime music? That, that, that was quite popular Yeah, yeah. While. First you get down on your knees, fiddle with your rosaries, bow your head with great respect, and genuflect, 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 do the Vatican rag. Very <laughs> timely piece, considering they're a new pope. Yes. Is there yeah. a new? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've been in Philo too long. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Any other uh, venue? Like, how about some uh, uh, good old boogie woogie? I listen to boogie woogie. I do not try it. That well, I can do new. About a piano player who's trying to uh, somebody who's living underneath a, a piano player who plays boogie woogie all night. He goes a rumble, rumble, rumble on the left hand. He goes a twinkle, twinkle, twinkle on the right. Rumble, 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 tinkle, 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 plays piano all night. He goes a rumble, rumble, rumble on the left hand, and so on. That's hard. You know. Can't split my brain more than four ways. <laughs> How about some classical? Uh, no, I wouldn't touch ever, it. No, can't never, improvise. Never did play it. Can't improvise on classical music. No, you can't. Not one note out of place. Right. Now, did you, you the feeling, but no notes. Did you learn to read music? Do you read music? I read fake charts. Uh huh. That's the best way to learn. Get the feeling of it. Learn how to make the chords in my left hand, and feel free. Right. 
But yeah, to get it off the page right away is very important. Did Otherwise, you play by ear as a child? Like, yes. Did you hear and yes. just go pick it out yep. on, the, on yep. the piano? I would listen to, I had a six transistor radio glued to this ear, learned rock and roll, and later moved up the dial to WNEW, where they're playing Tony Bennett and Ella Fitzgerald and Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. I'd go up to 47th Street and buy the charts in book form and come home and try and make myself sound like what I heard on the radio. Yeah. Got good enough to fool people into paying me. Right. Really well, miraculous. Do you have, uh, did you have a recording career at all? I mean, did you, did you make some recordings? Did you sell some records? Or Just the souvenir anything? tapes. Just souvenir Can I, tapes. Would you like to buy a tape? No, I don't. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <Okay. laughs> so you did that. You, you, yeah. you did. Yeah. Uh, on the ships. I've worked in Norway, too. Mm -hmm. Four Norwegian ships and the country of Norway. I have some strange karma with the Norwegians. And uh, I always brought souvenir tapes back in the days of tapes. Remember tapes? Uh, and sold them or gave them away or whatever, depending on it. They also served as audition tapes for agents. Right. Back when cruise ships used to go out and come back without a major problem, I guess. <laughs> yes, and if anything <laughs> happened on ours, we didn't hear about it, except that we were, my daughter and I were in Shanghai the day before Tiananmen Square happened. Wow. Yes, so we, we knew something was coming, but we missed it by a day. What was that, 89? 89, yes, yes. And then we crossed the Pacific to Alaska just after the Exxon Valdez. Wow. Yes, it was a disaster trip. The Forrest Gump of disasters. <laughs> <laughs> I had you know, a good time. We're, we're getting close to running out of time here. We have a few minutes left. I, now, Felicia, you mentioned that the two of you might have some sort of a project. Possibly. She's As running a bar. I work in bars. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we have a bar, and Max likes bars. So, um... Yeah, this summer I'm planning on bringing in a lot of extra stage acts. We have a fabulous show called The 39 Steps that is what it sounds like. It's Hitchcock's The 39 Steps done with four clowns. Mm -hmm. So there's not a whole lot but rolling furniture. So we're going to clear that out and bring in some guest acts. And so I'm looking for... Oh, okay. Yeah. And you've got a full bar there thinking. at the theater? We now? do, yeah. Know? Yeah. Get, uh -huh. a, get some Germain Robin brandy or a martini, whatever you want. Right. I've worked that room before. coffee and cookies. Yeah. Down there. I've worked that room before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a great place. Yeah, it is. We want to talk to Felicia just a couple more minutes here before we go out, too, to talk about some of the upcoming shows. Now, Boy, Boy Meets Girl, that's what's playing right now. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. That's running now? Until right now, until, uh, until April 14th. Okay. It closes. It's uh, a thriller. If you like film noir, mm -hmm. definitely come, uh, come see Boy Gets Girl. It's... You know, it's about a, uh, a woman who's a professional. She's got her life in control. She gets set up on a blind date. She goes out with the guy who seems nice enough. She goes out on a second says, you know, I don't think this is going to work out. And he begins stalking her to the point of mm. it disrupting her life in a very real and very scary way. Um, so, and it's Ooh, been... a little suspense there, too. A lot of suspense. Uh, we've been selling out, so definitely get your tickets if you're interested in it because we've... We're only in our second week, and ticket sales are, are doing very, very well. That's what you want to hear. Yeah. And some of the other shows coming up. We talked about your show. Bengal Tiger is, is next. Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, um, uh, which I would describe as a spiritual dramedy. It's got plenty of comedy in it. It's hard to call it a straight comedy. Uh, after that, The 39 Steps, which is Alfred Hitchcock's The 39 Steps, done with four clowns. Mm -hmm. So two of the roles... Uh, Two, char two actors play 250 roles between the two of them. So there's a man, a woman, there's a Hannah, and then all, all three female roles, and then two clowns that literally do. Sounds like fun. Run, and that, run, And that's run. a summer run. June, it is. June 6th it through is. July 7th. A lot of uh, physical comedy in that. <laughs> Doubt, I feel like a lot of people may be familiar with. Um, it was just a, an Oscar-winning movie with Meryl Streep and Philip Seymour Hoffman, set in 1964. Um, in a Catholic school, mm -hmm. and it really is about what the title suggests. It's about doubt and mm -hmm. uh, what happens when you doubt another person or your faith or you know any of your beliefs. Um, and that's a, just a really gorgeous play, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Okay. Um, after doubt, I'm gonna cheat over here. We have in the next room the vibrator play, <laughs> or the vibrator play. Which uh, is another comedy slash love story. Isn't as risque as it sounds, I promise. But it, it does take place in uh, 1880s New York. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it concerns a young woman, new mother. Uh, her husband's a doctor. Uh, and he's invented this new device for treating hysteria in women. And it's a very early vibrator. Uh, and 
this wife, this woman, Catherine, is terribly curious about it because she's unfulfilled and she doesn't know why. She's not terribly happy in her marriage or with her child. And by the end of the play, it does have a happy ending. It really is a love story, but plenty of uh, plenty of naughty naughtiness in that one too. Um, Time Stands Still is a beautiful play about uh, taking a different path in life. Mm -hmm. That a photojournalist who comes back from Iraq. Um, she works for something like National Geo. Uh, her best friend has a new girlfriend and she's pregnant and it leads her to question, should I stop this crazy life path that I'm on and settle down or should I continue on it? And it, she really is at a fork in the road. So it's mm -hmm. a really beautiful play. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a great season. Yeah, yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. We're talking with Felicia Freitas. She's the uh, producing director for the Mendocino Theater Company. And we have Max, the piano player, who's also uh, with us here. And we only have a, a few minutes left. And so we want to once again turn to our <coughs> musician over here and prevail upon him to uh, entertain us with a couple more songs. Sure. Uh, anything you feel appropriate, anything you feel like playing. You don't even have to sing if you don't want. I'd like to give special thanks to Lark Camp and Lark in the Morning for the use of the piano. Thanks, Max. We, we actually have an a audience participation call. They want to hear one of your original songs. Uh -huh, uh -huh, we have time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, about a gentleman, local hero, Jay Frankston, who was the first one to go to the dead letter office in New York and read and answer the letters to Santa. We show up in poor neighborhoods with gifts. Letters to Santa, where do they go? A room in the basement, didn't you know? They come in by hundreds, they come in like snow. They pile up in drifts, pile up in drifts, pile up in drifts. We send them below. But we send them below. By next week, this whole room will start to overflow. Santa. To Santa. <laughs> to Santa. That was from your show yep. that you wrote. Yep. Yeah. It was a great show. All right. We're just about out of time. We only have a few more minutes. I just want to give each of you a chance if you have, uh, do you have any performances coming up or do you have a way if, if somebody. I am retired officially. You you're brought officially me here retired drag to Philo. And screaming. No, no, not Philo. <laughs> Philo is distant history. Oh, okay. Where, where did you officially retire to after the big city of Philo? The big city of Fort Bragg. All right. <laughs> Very good, very good. So you are officially retired, you're just a teacher now. That's right, just right. a teacher. Well, thanks for... I'm passing the torch on to the next generation. Thanks Anybody who wants to play piano or learn to sing? Just wanted to thank you for spending time with us tonight. It was we a pleasure. really Wendy. enjoyed thank it. You. I'm sure the people that were able to watch and will able to watch any time they want to here on the, uh, on the internet will uh, enjoy your music. What's very the internet? Yeah. <laughs> I think it isn't that the is it webnet? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't the interweb? Yes, <coughs> the interweb. Yeah, right. Yes. Anyway, Max, thank you so much, and uh, Felicia, we want to thank you. If you have anything uh, to say before we uh, say goodbye, um, 
We're excited about the direction the theater company is yeah, going. Yeah, it's very come promising, and to have young blood like you uh, at a at a key position like yeah. that, that's exciting. Yeah, all I have to say is, you know, if you've never been to the Mendocino Theater Company, come check it out, take a chance, and if you have and you haven't been in some time, come back because because things are uh, things are changing in a very positive way. Um, and some exciting things are happening. So, Very good. Yeah, check 50 it out. 50 years of history there. 50 years, yeah. That's yeah. For a theater company, that's a long time. It is. It really is. There were not a lot of community theaters in this country when we started. Oh. Now there are plenty. <laughs> okay, I want to thank Terry Vaughn of Mendocino TV. This has been Mendocino Media Makers. I'm your host, Lindy Peters, filling in this week for Doug Waldo, but I'll be taking over the show now permanently, so it'll be my pleasure to be back with you each week with different media makers as we work our way through Mendocino County and find out some interesting people here that are uh, also fun to talk to. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you once again. Max, the piano player for all of us here at Mendocino TV. Have a great evening, everybody, and good night.